eukaryotic cells are large and complex cells that contain membrane-bound organelles, such as the nucleus. We know that both animals and plants are made of eukaryotic cells. All eukaryotic cells contain mitochondria, also known as the powerhouse of the cell. This organelle is responsible for making ATP. First, let's take a look at ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine is made up of the carbohydrates ribose and adenine. Tri, meaning three, refers to the three phosphates that are a part of ATP. This is important because the energy that is stored in ATP is mainly found between the bonds of the phosphates. If you break off one of the phosphates, energy is released and the ATP molecule becomes ADP or adenosine diphosphate. ADP can be turned back into ATP by adding back the third phosphate along with some energy. In that way, ATP is like a rechargeable battery. ATP is made through cellular respiration. Now let's look at where cellular respiration takes place. We know that the mitochondria is the organelle that makes ATP, but the process of cellular respiration actually begins in the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, the molecule of glucose is split in half during glycolysis. This process requires two ATP in order to get started. So basically, before we can get energy, we have to use a little bit of energy. At the end of glycolysis, we have made four ATP, which means we get back the two we used plus two extra. We also get two electron carrier molecules called NADH, those we'll save for later. And we get two pyruvate molecules, which are the halves of the glucose that we started with. The pyruvate molecules will continue into the mitochondria for the next stage of cellular respiration. The second part of cellular respiration is called the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle. This part of cellular respiration uses the pyruvate molecules to make more ATP and more electron carrier molecules. It also produces carbon dioxide. The pyruvate molecule goes through many changes throughout the cycle. So far, we've made a few molecules of ATP, but not very many. The last stage of cellular respiration is where we really get the most energy. The third and final stage of cellular respiration is oxidative phosphorylation, which includes the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. First, the electron carrier molecules that we made in glycolysis and the citric acid cycle release their electrons to the electron transport chain. As the electrons are transported, they pump hydrogen ions across the membrane, creating a high concentration. At the end of the electron transport chain, the electron bonds with oxygen to form water. We know from what we learned about diffusion that molecules move from high concentrations to low concentrations. So the hydrogen ions move back across the membrane through the protein channel called ATP synthase. This produces ATP. The process of cellular respiration produces approximately 36 ATP per glucose. Glycolysis produces two ATP. The citric acid cycle produces two ATP and oxidative phosphorylation produces approximately 32 ATP. In summary, cellular respiration begins in the cytoplasm. Glucose is split in half to create two ATP, two NADH, and two pyruvate molecules. In the second stage of cellular respiration, two ATP, more NADH, and carbon dioxide are produced. In the final stage of cellular respiration, NADH is used to start the electron transport chain, which pumps hydrogen across the membrane, creating water and leading to the production of 32 ATP. This can be seen in the chemical formula for cellular respiration.